The history of Jeffrey Dahmer, the real story behind his death. So who was Jeffrey Dahmer and when did his terrible reign of terror occur? Jeffrey Dahmer was one of the most blatant serial killers in American history. He was born on May 21, 1960, and his violent killing spree took place between 1978 and 1991. Dahmer committed his first murder in 1978 in Bath Township, Ohio. His second murder was recorded in 1987. Over the following five years, he murdered 15 more boys and young men, mostly impoverished and of African-American, Asian, or Latino descent, predominantly in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Dahmer's murders were exceptionally horrible, since they included cannibalism and necrophilia. He'd set off by picking them up at malls, gay bars, and bus stations, and luring them home with promises of sex and money, before killing them with drug-laced drinks. After being intimate with the dead, he would dismember them and throw away the parts, sometimes retaining the skulls or genitalia as a reminder. He routinely documented the murder process with photographs of his victims, presumably so that he could look back on each step and relive the moment afterward. Due to his actions, he was commonly known as the Milwaukee Monster or the Milwaukee Cannibal, although other serial killers such as John Wayne Gacy had targeted and killed more young men than Dahmer then. John Wayne raped, tortured, and murdered at least 33 young men and boys within 11 years, around the exact same time as Dahmer. For the murder he committed in 1978, Dahmer received a 16th consecutive life sentence in May 1992. His first 15 life sentences began in February 1992. In 1994, another prisoner at a jail in Wisconsin fatally stabbed Dahmer. In 1992, he pleaded guilty to 15 counts of murder, rape, dismemberment, and consumption. He was given 15 consecutive life terms, of which he only served three. The fact that he didn't receive the death penalty for his heinous atrocities makes us wonder, how did he die? Here's what truly happened. There was a notorious criminal at Wisconsin's Columbia Correctional Facility around the same time as Dahmer, 1992, named Christopher Scarver, who was sentenced to 25 years for an armed robbery that ended in murder. Dahmer often caused tension among the prison population. Scarver claims that the serial murderer would sculpt prison food in the shape of severed limbs and drizzle packets of ketchup on top to look like blood as a taunt to other convicts. He also mentioned that Dahmer would position his food sculptures in locations where inmates would likely be. Again, because of his actions, there was an attempt on Dahmer's life in July 1992. Using a makeshift plastic knife, another inmate made a feeble attempt to slit Dahmer's throat. The incident didn't result in any injuries, and the guards at the prison assumed it was an outlier, although the prison officials were worried about the serial killer's safety. For this reason, the first year of Dahmer's incarceration was reportedly spent in protective isolation. Sometime later, officials decided he could safely join the other 622 convicts. On the other hand, Scarver believed that Dahmer went too far with certain inmates and prison staff members. While some inmates changed their ways while in prison, Scarver didn't think Dahmer was one of them. Scarver avoided Dahmer as much as possible because of the cannibal's behavior. Still, he was never without a newspaper clipping detailing Dahmer's crimes. Unfortunately, Scarver felt like Dahmer had poked him in the back, so he lost it. He grabbed a 20-inch metal bar from the weight arena that day. He confronted Dahmer about whether he had committed the horrors he was accused of. Shocked, Dahmer looked about desperately for a way out. Scarver stopped him with a block, then clubbed him twice in the head. Dahmer was brought to the hospital with a severely fractured skull, and an hour later he was pronounced dead. So that solves the mystery. Jeffrey Dahmer was beaten to death by a fellow inmate on November 28, 1994. He was 34 at the time. And Scarver? Scarver was given two further life terms plus 30 years in 1995 for the killings of Dahmer and Jesse Anderson, another prisoner he killed alongside Dahmer. Following Dahmer's death, there was much disagreement over what should be done about the serial killer's brain. His parents were at odds over what to do with his remains, especially his brain. His mother, Joyce, had expressed interest in having her son's brain investigated to determine the possible influence of biological causes on his conduct. However, Dahmer's father, Lionel Sr., insisted that his son's brain be burned with the rest of his body. The brain was ultimately cremated.
Do you agree with Joyce that it would have been better to use Dahmer's brain to research potential biological causes for serial killings, to help scientists prevent similar murdering impulses in others? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned to our channel and turn on post notifications for new updates.